Recently, I made this interactive payroll calculator for somebody. We can select any person and the payroll for that person will be shown in this page here. To create this interactive payroll calculator, we require the timesheet data. So I have put a copy of the timesheet data into this blank file and let's construct the whole thing from here step by step. So here we can see that we have a person name, their corresponding payroll ID, date, start time, end time and the status. In this particular scenario, there are five kinds of status. Blank means it's a regular type of workday and then you have different types of leave. To set this up, because we need to select a person, we'll need to have a list of all the possible choices. Now, if you look at the person column here, each person may appear many times, like Bailey Chupin has appeared already three times here. So I'm going to add a new worksheet and call this as options. So in this, we will make a list for people. And to get all the unique names, we can use the unique function on our TS table person column. From a selection perspective, it makes sense if the list is alphabetically ordered. So not just unique, I'm going to sort this. This is perfect. The next thing that we want to do is for each of the status that we have here, normal, unavailable, leave, public holiday, sick leave, there is a different rate applicable in the payroll calculation. So I'm going to maintain a list of these values. So here is a list of those values. Finally, we'll also require a pay period information. This can be both dynamic or static. In this scenario, I'm just going to make it static by typing Jan 2023 here. Now that all of these information is maintained, let's go ahead and set up the payroll. We'll add one more worksheet, name this as payroll. Within this, we want to start off by saying select a person and show all of these names as the choices. So this is where we will select the C3 cell and then go to the data ribbon, click on data validation and from any value change this to list and the list source is go to the options and point to this range here B4 to B288 so that that list will show up here. You might think what happens if someone else get added? So for example, in the timesheet data, I'm going to go and right now my name is not listed. So I'm going to type my name here, Chandu D. And if I go to the options, now the options list is ending at row number 289 and Yulma Havel is the last name. If I go here and go all the way down, we don't see Yulma's name. So this type of a listing is not the correct way to do. So the correct way to do would be first up come here and note the first cell the first cell is b4 and because the values can be any number of items it is denoted with a b4 hash as the spill range so make note of the b4 address and go to formulas and define a name and the name will be staff and it refers to not just b4 but the entire spill range that goes from b4 so we'll say b4 hash we go back to our payroll calculator select c3 go to data data validation and instead of hard coding this to b4 to b20 288 we'll simply say this refers to the staff list this way when i check this i'll have yulma name listed here as well so let's pick chantal and then for that person we want to show their payroll information here first let's Fill up the format of the information that we want. So this is how that information should appear. And payroll ID for Chantel would be here. We could use XLOOKUP function, XLOOKUP this person in the TS table person column and then get the TS payroll ID. Name will be same as whatever I have picked and pay period will be my options pay period value. So this information has come up. Now we would like to calculate these hours, rates and the amounts. Let's make a quick note about the normal here. Even though it is called normal on the payroll calculator, within the data, normal is actually denoted with the blank values. So coming back here, let's write a sum ifs formula to count up how many hours are there for Chantel where it is normal, unavailable, leave, public holiday, etc. 
so we can say sub ifs p s and we now need to actually get the hours another thing that i noticed at this time when i was doing this payroll is we don't actually have hours we just have start time and end time in the payroll so i'm going to go back to the time sheet and quickly introduce hours column and this is nothing but end time minus start time now that we have those hours we can come here and use the sum ifs function and then add up those hours ts of hours ts person is this person status now here is the fun part if it is normal then the status should be blank so i'm going to use if function here if this is equal to normal then blank else this value let's see what this adds up to that is how many hours they have worked but it's actually showing as a fraction of the day so let's multiply this with 24 7 hours there and then i'm gonna drag this down let's quickly double check this calculation chantal kinwan i'm gonna come here and search for that and these are how many hours so two of them are unavailable if i add up these two 0.291 so that's seven hours so we do get those information here now we need to know the rates the rates are already maintained here in the options so i'm gonna just get these rates directly here and then let's just multiply this with that so now that individual bits are calculated total hours is sum of this column and total amount is sum of all right the actual calculator bit is done i can now select a different person and i can quickly see what their payroll looks like but it doesn't look anything pretty so let's quickly apply some formatting and there is our payroll it provides all the necessary information and i can now pick a different person then that will show up 